doing a leak down test on a generator. We had oil all inside the air box here, all down in there. The oil level was low on the uh, dipstick, wasn't even really on it. Checked compression, had 195 pounds on the front cylinder, 60 on the rear cylinder. So we ended up uh, putting our top dead center on the back and we went ahead and calibrated our gauge out. We're using nitrogen as our compressed air. Set up here at 100 pounds of pressure. Our other side here, we got this unhooked. We're calibrated out. Now we hook up our hose to the cylinder. And as you can notice right there, we are leaking at about 95%. You're listening now for where the air is coming from. I can hear the air down here in the crankcase. I do not really hear anything in our intake, and I don't hear anything back here in our exhaust. Now we'll go ahead and do a test here on the front one to show you what it should have looked like. And we're gonna go ahead and do this thing top dead center. Put our extension in there, something to... So you've seen this one come up, seen this one go down. Watching her come up. Gonna have to get our top dead center. What I like to do is push on that because the air will actually shove the cylinder back down. Cut there at zero. And there's what it should have looked like. Here we're only losing about 5%. 20% is the normal acceptable level. Our pressure coming in here is still right at 95 pounds. The book says use 90. Uh, if I'm going off memory here, you're supposed to zero out your, your leak, uh, leakage gauge, and that's what I've done. You can hear a little bit inside there, but obviously there's a tremendous difference between the leakage rate there. At this point, the motor can't uh, really be repaired out in the field, and generally the cost to do that is going to be more than just replacing the motor. We ended up doing a standard compression test. I had 195 pounds on the front cylinder. I had 60 on the back. That's what led me to this test here, along with the oil that was all up in uh, the air box. The problem that we were called out for is overcrank, and that's where we were at. And so now that it's failed, you can look through here, the results. Air escaping from the carburetor, air intake, check the intake valve. If air is escaping through the exhaust, check the exhaust valve. If air is escaping through the breather, check the piston rings. Air is escaping between the cylinder head and block. The head gasket should be replaced and check both gasket surfaces. So there you go. Now I do want to mention right after checking the compression and seeing that it was that low, I checked my valve clearance and I was uh, intolerant. That's the front one which had good compression. One that did not. Today we're coming back to change out the motor and this is the motor as it comes. So we're just going to haul this thing over there, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, looks like a jug lug, but it's a $5 deal from Menards. So we'll get this thing hauled over there. We're gonna get the other motor warmed up, drain the oil out of it. This motor does not come with oil, so make sure you bring oil with you when you go to change it, because there's nothing in there. Basically, we've got to strip all this off uh, all over in here, the end plate, take the fan blade off, the muffler. I tend to keep me in little dedicated toolbox for this. See right here? I can't stress enough, either use earplugs or something, but after a while, it doesn't seem loud at first, but this will cause your ears to end up ringing later and get tinnitus, which is untreatable. That's something that I'm now dealing with. Don't know if it's from this or not, but I don't take a chance anymore. As I said, the motor screwed. I don't want to get it too hot because I got to take the muffler and stuff off. You can see metal shavings in that right there. This is why we don't try to fix this stuff in the field. It's not worth it. <laughs> so 
so far we've got it disassembled. We went ahead and put one of the bolts back in there to hold the lid so it doesn't fall down. We got the oil drained out. The book's got everything piece by piece in there. If you're not a Generac serviced authorized dealer, you shouldn't even be doing this. So don't even attempt this if you're not one of those. I don't want any responsibility for you hurting yourselves. There's my disclaimer for today. You got a honking bolt there like that one right there. Don't lose that. That's where you need your puller on the end of that. I picked up a cheap one from Harbor Freight. That was easy. Got our slip rings here. Make sure you pay attention to that. Positive and negative makes a difference. Got to take these two screws out right in here. If you don't, you'll snap those off your brushes. Now, speaking of slip rings, when it gets super cold out on these older ones, sometimes those will freeze into place and they'll not uh, make contact with the rotor. And then next thing you know, it won't produce voltage and it goes out on under voltage. Now, this is something you're definitely gonna do by hand. Otherwise, you do it by uh, your drill or something with your adapter. You'll possibly snap them bolts off. The way I got into generators originally was I was bored with just doing old heating and air conditioning. And I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. Something new without having to leave the field. So we did a lot where I was at before. We don't do a bunch of them here. And like I said, you snooze, you lose, you tend to forget. And uh, although, you know, you got to go through the school every two years, which is kind of a crock because they really haven't changed the design much. They the only thing they've changed is their electronics more than anything, and they've changed the rotors just a touch. But those are your brushes right there. That's how it transfers the DC voltage. It spins, creates a magnetic field, catches the flux lines on the outside, you have voltage. Basically, you gotta put a bolt, you gotta screw this in there. This is that same bolt that you had before. Basically, this one right here but it's been cut off. If you notice, it's been cut off. Well, this piece right here has got a thread right there. So you're gonna thread this thing in first. You've taken your hacksaw, you've put a hack in the end of it. So that goes in there. Take your screwdriver, you screw this thing in. Now you're gonna use your metric bolt that you've got special. Yep, there it is. I had to pick this up at like, Menards or Lowe's or something like that. And then you're gonna tighten that dog up. So you can do that with a crescent wrench or whatever. Okay, this little crappy toolkit here is from Harbor Freight. It's metric, once again, like I said, we just don't use this stuff enough to really justify a high dollar set. And uh, so that just goes on there like that. And that right there is a 19 millimeter. I'm going to put my backup wrench here. So we'll get onto a spot here that's not going to touch anything. That way any gouges don't really hurt anything. This thing will pop. Boom, baby. That scares the piss out of you. Back that puppy out of there. Cha-bang. And then your stator and rotor are all going to come off. Hopefully it didn't screw my thing up too badly. Now you can pull that back out and thread it, or you can leave it on there and kind of use it as a guide as you're pulling the motor out. Just kind of got to be easy with her. I have a dead blow hammer, which is not on my truck, I see. So, and then this is where a block of wood comes in handy. See, there we go, it's coming apart. Boom. But there's your motor, you can see right in the center there. But that's your spindle, and basically that comes out. So at this point here, I'm just gonna pull this off to the side, get it out of my way. I'm not gonna go taking things apart any more than what I need to. You mark this with your marker pin, that way everything's lined back up. Makes it a little bit easier. All right, got our uni strut here. It's just a standard piece. That's gonna help lift the weight of the rotor up and kind of help us to maneuver it so that we can get things in and out of the way. Just basically kind of 
got to be careful because your leads are right there on the end. Don't want to rip those completely out. All we need to do is primarily lift it up and get it off of there. You can see right there is our spindle that helped hold it up. This has rotated a little bit. So we could have probably kept that together a little better. It'd been kind of nice. So we just tap that back on here in a little bit. Um, we want to back that bolt out of there and uh, then the motor will kind of start coming loose. The battery, gas, all that should be uh, turned off before you even get started. Just pull that back a little bit further. We can unthread that bolt that we originally put in there. There you go. And she's still in pretty doggone good shape. Okay, we want to get our exhaust manifold here off. Mm. That came with a new gasket, or at least we got one for it. And see this little morsel of love? See how that don't fit? That's engineering at its best, boys and girls. The almighty PB Blaster. So if we can get it to creep in there. Look at that. The goose juice got her. That stuff's wicked. I love it. It used to be a WD-40 Fruit Loop, but now I'm a PB Blaster Fruit Loop. Now, this is where a ball and socket would come in handy, but I am not a big believer in the ball and socket ones. They still didn't give you enough room to get it in there at a right angle. So, yeah, you'd have to chop off about that much of it. Proper use of your tools. There we go. And there's that. Okay, we're gonna need to unhook all of our safety switches here. So there's that. That comes out. We gotta get back here to the power plug going to the starter. Get your choke solenoids. Now we need to get the nut off the solenoid and the ground wire down there on bottom. There we go. Found it yet. If I remember correctly, these do not come off very easy at all. Just trim the bad part right off. Just like new again. All right, she came right out. Just hook that around your shoulder like a jam box and pull it right out. Yep, so basically right there is all that's connected to the motor. Uh, two wires for the oil switch, two wires for the temperature switch, the number 18 wire for your magneto grounding, two wires to your uh, slip rings, to your brushes, grounding wire, start solenoid and two power wires there for power to the control module and the battery, I believe. And then you had your, that really didn't connect to the thing, to the uh, motor, but that was your choke solenoid. So that's about it. Basically just reverse it now to get it back together. I was correct. It does not come with that motor bracket to mount it to the, to the base. So that's gotta come off, which is another good reason why you wanna take all the oil out of this thing. Right there's chunks, you can see it. Those shavings right there are gonna be your rings. Yep, that's your rings right there. Wow, look at all the shavings in the oil filter there. They are just coming out. That's, this filter was just changed in May of this year, so this ain't like it's been going on for a while. There's another piece of that ring, holy crap. Yep, she's jacked. We're putting everything back together. Got our pressure switches, temperature switch, magneto, all that's in there. Got our starter wires, ground lugs, battery cable, all that's in place. Got our servo control wire tied here uh, to that loom right here. Those have a tendency sometimes to fall out. Popped it off there. Got her back to here. And just rotate it, get it lined up. And there you go. It's back together. Everything's connected. There we go. First time, haven't even started it yet. Here we go.
We've checked the battery. We've checked the battery charger. We checked the starting amps. We've checked the voltage and the frequency. All of them seem to be right on spec with where they should be at. So the only last thing I want to do is double check my oil level. You gotta give it a second, let it drain down. These sometimes are very hard to read, which is why they got the double notches. It's just below the notch, we'll give it a little drink and then uh, we'll call her happy. I just leave that there for the customer. Because it's an air-cooled motor, it will burn oil. Um, you're supposed to check it every 24 hours. That's what the manual says. Nobody usually does. You don't want to shut down on low oil because damage could have already happened by that time. That's kind of a fail-safe. Look underneath, make sure no oil's draining out of the bottom of it. Does not appear to be. I'm going to wire tie these wires right there. There's that. All right, if you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check down in the description area down below. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the videos. I try to make them worthwhile for you to watch. And uh, if you would, I love comments, so feel free to leave something down below. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one.